Eric from Teachers Talking Tech here. Have you ever wanted to post a link for your students that would take them right to an activity? And would you like some ways to organize your activities to make them easier for you and your students to find? Well, these are just two of the great updates that Seesaw has added for activities. They're always listening to teachers, and this is one of those cases where they really were listening and made some great changes that I think you're going to love. So first, let's look at adding that direct link right to an activity. And now this would be useful maybe if you're using Seesaw in tandem with like Google Classroom or Schoology. You can actually post a direct link that'll take students right to an activity. And even if they're using an iPad, it will also open the app for them and take them right to the activity. So really, really useful. Okay, here is what you need to do. First, you're gonna need to assign the activity before this will work. I saw some questions already coming up where people are saying this isn't working and you need to first assign the activity, then you'll be able to see this option. So I'm gonna click on assign activity and in my activity library, I'm gonna choose one of my activities to assign. Okay, little tip here for you. Um, when you're assigning an activity, right over here on the right, you can actually not only edit which students get your activity, so I could just send it to a certain group, but also you'll notice there's folders. You can actually pre-assign a folder that this activity is going to go into so that when your students respond, it will go automatically into that folder. This is really nice when you're trying to keep things organized. All right, now I'm gonna talk more about folders in just a minute. All right, I'm gonna click on the check mark and then I'm gonna assign this to my students. Now let's go back to the activity feed and see what it looks like. All right, so there it is and it is assigned. Now to get a direct link, you go down to these three dots in the bottom right, click on them and click get student link. And then after that, you can go ahead and copy this student link, and then you can paste it right into Google Classroom or an email or Schoology or another way like that, where the students will come right to this link. How handy is that? All right, so now that we've talked about that direct link, let's talk about some organization here. So another thing you're gonna see when you click on those three dots is edit folders. Now this is kind of a nice way to keep things organized. Uh, you might want to consider creating folders for like the days of the week or maybe for different subject areas. And when I click edit folders, uh, let's say I want to add this to all of our Monday activities. So I can click on Monday. And, and by the way, you can also create folders from this view as well. Okay, now do you notice on the bottom left, it now has a little folder icon and says Monday. Okay, this will help you as the teacher if you want to find all of your assignments you posted on a Monday, you go right over here to this folder icon on the right, click it, and then say, I only want to see Monday's activities. And it will um, sort it down so you're only seeing activities in that folder. And you'll notice on the top left, it says we're in the Monday folder. When you want to leave that folder, just click on this X, and it will take us back out. So we can see all of the assignments in the activity feed. All right, you can also do this with scheduled activities and archived activities, and it will show you only the activities that are in that folder. Now I'm gonna to switch to the student view. Okay, so this is my student. And what you're gonna notice is that when a student is viewing activities, there's some changes for them as well. Now a student can also view by those folders. So this is a great way for students and families to be able to sort for you know sort through when you've shared an activity with them. So if they click on that Monday folder, it'll only show those activities, okay? Now, you'll also notice that for students, they have a to-do, an in-progress, and a done tab, and those were added recently too. The to-do is obvious. That's all the things that you have assigned that they haven't done yet. There's also the in-progress tab, this is for paid customers that use the send back feature or when students submit it as a draft, this is where they can go back and find it. This is really nice because if you're a teacher and you're sending back work for students to do more, then they can easily find it in this in progress tab. And then done is nice too, because sometimes students want to remember what they've turned in or go back and see activities they've already completed. They can view those by clicking on the done button. 
So the next one is a really big update for distance learning, especially if you have young students, and that's the ability to print an activity template. So in this example, I have handwriting practice. This is something that's kind of really tough for students to do on their device. And even if they have an iPad, uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to write so small. Uh, and so the ability to print something out could be huge for students at home. So all they need to do, I'm gonna to switch to my student view here. All students are going to need to do to print an activity template is just go down to the three dots and click print activity. Okay, now after they print out the activity and they complete it with paper and pencil, then they can click on add response and then they can simply take a picture of their work and then use that as their response for the teacher. I really, really love this. I know that I was in contact with some parents last year who had kindergartners and writing on their iPads was a struggle for them. So this adds another really great way for students to respond to activities. And how easy is that? All they have to do is just tap on those three buttons, on those three dots, and then print that activity out. All right, let's get to the very last activities update. When students might respond to an activity more than one time. Now, first of all, if you didn't know that you could do this, you can. Let's go back to that student view. And in activities, students can see their work that they still have left to do, but they can also see work that they've already done. And you'll notice they can respond again. Now, maybe this student decided that they made a mistake or they just wanted to respond another time. So let's say he clicks on respond again. And then, see for this example, I'm just gonna do a couple of smiley faces. Okay, so he goes ahead and he turns it in again. Now, this could get confusing as the teacher because in the past with Seesaw, you would only see that second version. But now, as the teacher, when I click on this gray bar, I actually am gonna see both of the versions of that student work that was turned in. So I can go through and I can say, oh, I see this was the first one where he didn't do all the work. Aha, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And then I'm gonna keep only the new one that he turned in right here. Now you could also approve both and they would both go into the student journal. All right, so that is the last update that when students respond more than once, you're gonna see all the versions of their work. So let's just go through and quickly review the different changes that were added to CESA activities with this update. The first is once you've assigned an activity, you can get a direct student link right to that activity. For students, they now have a to-do, an in-progress, and a done tab to help them organize their activities. And on top of that, for teachers and students, there's now a folder organizational tool that you can use as well. Students can also print their activities, and they can print that activity just by tapping on the three dots and then clicking print activity. And then again, they would respond to that activity by taking a picture of that work they did with their paper and pencil. And then finally, you can show all versions of your student responses on the teacher end of activities. All right, I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck this year. I think that activities is gonna be a great way for you to really connect with your students during this time when many of us are using it for distance learning.